Hi teachers, this is Shane from Math is Fundamental and I created this video to show you the process that I use to make badges for my classroom. We're going to be using the applications Keynote and Pages, which are both Apple products, but you could probably make this in, in other things. I just wouldn't use quite the same uh, method. So let's talk a little bit about um, some of the things you might need for this. One of the things that we purchased last year that was a, a great buy was this uh, digital color paper uh, by Hammerhill. Uh, it's really expensive um, for just 250 sheets. I think with our discount, we got it for like $12 uh, bundle, but it is really, really great for making badges. They print very cleanly on there, no, no smudging. Uh, it's also very substantial paper, so it really kind of feels like uh, a trading card. It doesn't just feel like a thin sheet of paper. Um, it also works great for like task cards. If you want to print something out that's going to last for a long time, I really do recommend this paper. It works great. Uh, something else that we purchased was uh, trading card binder pages, these sleeves where you can put the the finished product badges in there, in their binder or whatever. We used these last year and they work very, very well. Uh, another thing that we're gonna try this year is we're gonna try using stickers. So we, we made kind of a, uh, a sticker chart where key, as kids master skills, they can put these sticker badges on them. So this is um, more or less the type that we ordered, two by two badges. Uh, the process I'm showing, I'm showing you can also work for brag tags. Uh, these are popular with the younger kids and you know, you basically would follow the same um, method to do these, I would think. I also used more or less the same method in Keynote to make my task card. So this will maybe give you some tips on how that's done. All right, so the way we use badges is as kids mastered skill areas, they would earn a new badge. Uh, this is an example one for algebra. And then they put them in their sleeves like this and they kept them in their uh, binder initially. And then throughout the year we got other ideas for badges and we thought we'd make some sort of mini badges for smaller achievements. And this is a few examples of some that we did. And then we had bought some two by two inch sleeves uh, which we also put in their folder. These are actually designed for coins. So coin collectors a lot of times will buy these to put coins in, but they work perfect for these um, two inch badges that we had created. And it was kind of nice because then there were, you could get more on a page. The other ones, I think you've got nine to a page and these are four by five, so you got 20 to a page. So a lot, lot more badges in, a, in one sleeve. And then as we made badges throughout the year, we just kept coming up with new ideas. We'd have, you know, activities we do in class or STEM challenges or team building challenges. And we'd uh, make up badges for those as well. In case you're interested in how I organized my badges and kept them, I, I used this chart like this. I hung it in the room. And as kids earned achievements of various sorts, I just had them pick them up themselves. I didn't really monitor um, them doing that other than you know if they won a game or something I'd say oh congratulations go get your Kahoot badge or whatever um, it was really up to them to manage when they uh, mastered things in math when they picked up their badges and believe me they're very good at that they did not miss their opportunity to get their badges all right let's jump right in how I use Keynote to actually design the badges I've opened up Keynote and then we're on our template page I usually choose to start with a white background once I'm here, the next step really is to decide what size do you want your badges to be. Um, common sizes for the badges might be 3.5 by 2.5, which is basically the trading card size, or I also showed you a 2 by 2 badge. Either one is pretty easy to make. I'll go full screen here. So, first thing we want to do is we want to change our document size to make it the size we want. We're going to click on Document. Under slide size, we're going to change it to custom slide size. And then it's going to give it to you in uh, pixels or points, what size you want it to be. And you basically just have to have the right ratio. 
So if I put in 3.5 by 2.5, well, that's really going to be way too small. So I'm going to do, um, I want it to be actually 2.5 wide, or excuse me, 250, we'll change it to, and then 350. So that has the same ratio as 2.5 to 3.5. Um, you can actually, if you want, double that as well. Uh, that will give you a little bit higher resolution. And you can drag in, you know, maybe bigger images. So I can double this to 500 by 700. And it's not going to really change anything here in terms of the way it looks. But um, when I drag images in there, it's going to look a little different. Let's try 100%. All right. So from here, what I usually like to do is uh, work in a template. So what you're going to do is you're going to click uh, Format. And we're going to edit this master slide. And then in here, we're going to choose whatever text we want to choose. So I click on the text tab. I'm going kind of fast because I don't want this to be really, really long. But let's say we want it to be like that. Okay, the next step that I want to do is I want it to, I like to insert a background so my cards have a little bit of color. So I'm going to go to um, insert up at the top. I'm going to go to choose. So I've already pulled out uh, a background that I want to use. And as I insert this, I'll talk to you a little bit about um, places to find that. Uh, Teachers Pay Teachers is a great, great resource for finding uh, backgrounds. If you just search under backgrounds, search frames, search fonts, you can find a lot of great artists who are making uh, terrific work there uh, that you can use in your products. Um, you can also just do a Google image search for backgrounds, and I found a lot of cool backgrounds that way that I use in my classroom. Only thing I'd caution you about that is when you're um, doing Google image searches, you want to make sure that um, you are not using that uh, somebody else's copyright in a, a product that you're going to sell. But if it's something you're just going to use in your classroom, you have a lot of leeway to, to use it for educational purposes that way. Okay, so here's the background that I dropped in. And you can see it doesn't exactly fit. It's a little bit uh, smaller than the, the slide that I have here. Um, you can just uh, drag it a little bit larger like I just did there. Um, you can also, if you choose, or I think it's in, no, arrange, yeah. You can click constrain proportions, and that allows me to actually uh, stretch the sides. Oops, I gotta un uncheck that. If I uncheck constrain, then I can stretch and pull the, the sides so it fits just right, if that's something that's important to you. Anything that's hanging off the edge isn't gonna show on your slide anyway, so, okay. So the next thing I usually do is I insert a frame, and I, Got a frame ready here, so I'm going to go to Insert, Choose, and I'm going to choose this frame here. This is one that I purchased. Now you notice this frame is not oriented the right way, so another thing you can do here is you can change the angle that it is. And again, like, like the other one, it may not be exactly the size that I want it, so I might have to uncheck Constrained Proportions and kind of stretch and pull it until it's just right. Um, I like everything to be nice and centered. It looks like it might be centered, but if one thing you can do is you can right click and you can go align center. It looks like it was good. Align middle, and that will do it horizontally and vertically and make sure it's in the dead center. And you can see how I get those yellow lines popping in too. That also tells you when you're centered. That's kind of how I knew I was in the right place. Okay. So from here, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and click Done. And now I have this text box that comes in as part of my master. And in that text box, I can type anything I want. I'm just making something off the top of my head here. So let's just say we're doing uh, Math Ninja and is a badge for something. And can, again, center that and make that look nice. Uh, I'm not going to have any text here, so I'm just going to delete that, make that a little bit bigger. Pro tip, Command plus on a Mac makes your text bigger. That saves you a lot of time. All right. So right now it looks pretty cool, but I, it needs something else, right? It needs an image of some sort. So I'm going to add an image that I pulled out. Go to Insert, Choose. And then I just went to Google Image Search and searched for Ninja. 
and I found one that I liked, so I'm going to drop that in. Here's it. I, I'm not like a, a great artistic person or anything like that. It's just, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not creating all these images. The What I generally try to do, like most teachers, is get it done as quickly as possible and make it still look good. So I found this ninja. I like the way it looks on here, but there's this one little thing that bugs me here at the bottom. See this white space all around it and how it's going over my frame? That looks ugly, right? So I'm going to show you a little pro tip on how to get rid of that. If you click uh, the image itself, so you got the handles on it, click image, click instant alpha, and then over the white space where I want to get rid of, I can click and see how it's selected all that matching color area but there's a lot of color area that didn't quite get captured if you drag up it's gonna look for other colors within that range and it's gonna get you know more to the edges of my image like I want it to I click that I click done <clears throat> and then it's pretty much grabbed everything I want there's one little spot down here I see by his feet I can click there done and now, as you see, if I drag it over, well, I got that, that little spot there. <clears throat> now I can put my, have my ninja hanging off my frame a little bit. And I just think it looks a little bit better. It gives it a little bit more, you know, 3D effect or whatever like that. And, you know, you can customize your badges however you want. You know, maybe you want to turn your text or colorize your text or, or put other frames around or something like that. It really is, is up to you. You can make each one a little bit unique. I'm going to show you, uh, if you don't have frames, you can really pretty easily make your own frames. So I'm going to go ahead and add another slide. I'm going to um, edit this master slide. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to keep the same color background, but I'm going to delete this frame. And then I'm going to insert a shape here. And I'm going to use this kind of rect you know, curved edge rectangle tool. That color doesn't really work, so I want it to be uh, a white color. OK, so that's a sim very simple frame. Now, I, if I want, I can put a line on the edge. And there's a simple frame. Uh, if I wanted to be dashed, I could do that, or dotted, I could do that. Some other options here too, you know, for different types of edges. See how that one looks? Oh, that's kind of cool. So um, you don't even have to buy frames. Uh, there's tons of free frames. There's tons of free backgrounds on Teachers Pay Teachers. As I said, you can also just Google image search some of those things, and you can find some of the things that you like. All right. So let's say I'm done now with my badge. What I'm going to do at the end, after I've made my badges in Keynote, is I'm going to do File, Export to, and I'm going to choose Images. It's going to ask you what, you know, what format you want them, what pages you want. I, you don't have to really change anything there as long as you like all of your cards or badges that you made. So click Next. It's going to ask you where you want to put them. I'm going to call this badges. I'm going to put it on the desktop and export. And I'll jump to the desktop here. You see it created a folder that's called badges now. And if you double click that, the two badge cards are in there as JPEGs. So that's kind of cool. That's what we're going to use in the next step. So I'm going to pause for a second and we're going to jump into pages and then I'm going to show you how I put them into pages for formatting. Okay, through the magic of video, I'm back in pages now, Apple's pages. Uh, I started by opening up a new document, a new blank document. Um, my first step here then is to create a table. So I'm going to click to make a table. Next step. Um, if I'm doing the 3 by 5 by 2 by 5 inch badges, we want to make a 3 by 3 table. So you can take this down to 3 by 3. And I'm going to drag this a little bit bigger. Now, to make this work, we really need to make sure that we have the dimensions right in each cell. So if I click and then hold the shift key down and click down to the bottom, I can click 
click all of the cells at once. And then if I go to table in this tab over here, I can change the row to 3.5 inches and the column to 2.5 inches. And I'm going to have cells that are exactly the size that I want. I'm going to take off the alternating row color. That won't really matter for what we're going to do, but just so you can sort of see what it's going to look like. Uh, next thing I would do is I would right click on this table up at the top left corner and I would say align center and align middle and that will make sure that you're not too close to the edge. It does actually print pretty close to the edge at the top and the bottom so hopefully your printer can handle that kind of margin. Alright, I'm going to click this table again. I'm going to click this top left corner. And then usually what I do first is I, I want to have some lines to cut on. So I'm going to click on cell. I'm going to click on border on all sides. And then I'm going to click this dotted line. You can do dash lines too. And then I'm just going to make some dots like that. So those are the lines which I'm going to use to cut once I'm done. Now. Uh, the last step is pretty easy. What we're going to do is we're going to take our images that we created in Keynote and put them in each of these cells. Um, usually when you make badges like this, you're probably going to put the same badge in a uh, on one sheet. Uh, that way you can cut out a bunch and kind of stack them or keep them all together. You, you could mix and match them too, but I, I imagine most people wouldn't do that. So only thing you need to do here is drag and drop into the cell and boom, there's your, your badge. Um, you can actually, if you want to save time, you can click all the cells. See how I collected, uh, held down the shift key and click the top left and the bottom right. And then you can drag just over top and it puts them all in there. You can do copy paste and just keep pasting them in there. However you want to do that is fine. Um, that's really all it, all it takes to do that. Um, it's to help you with the formatting, I actually included a document that um, has this uh, template already. I also did a template for 2x2 two two badges in case you wanted to make some like that, as well as um, some pictures of the different products that we use to make and store our badges. So that's basically all there is to it. Last step is just to cut them out and give them to your kids. I know they're going to love them. My students last year really, really did, and I hope you have the same success. So good luck.